Welcome back once again to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. I'm David Waybright, and we're here to talk today about a two-player game, one of my favorites, Fight from Olympus. And with me, as always, Jeremy Salinas. So I have to ask, you said one of your favorites. Are you talking about just two-player games in general, or I am this ta- game? I am talking about two-player okay. two, two games to make in general, sure. although <laughs> I do like this game. Spoiler I, I just alert. Need to make, just needed to make sure. So... Let's talk about the designer first. Matthias Kramer. Yeah. This guy I, I, I really, really like for two games in particular, Glenn Moore and Rococo. Uh, Rococo is kind of on the weird side of things. Most people don't want to claim that they like the game because it's about dressmaking. I love that game. Fantastic yeah, game. Absolutely. Fantastic game. If you have not played it, go out and try Rococo. Great. Glenn Moore as well. Um, both of them really, really good games. So let's get into Fight for, uh, uh, Fight for Olympus. And the reason why I got this is because of the designer. Uh, very, little, uh, very little was known about the game or yeah. even talked about the game at Gen Con. I didn't know anything about it. I saw people playing at Gen Con, and that's kind of the first I'd seen it. I don't even think it showed up until Friday or Saturday. That's right. They didn't didn't have have it it the the first first day or two. Yeah, because we went to go look for it. Uh, It's cool. Uh, The theme. Uh, Obviously, it draws in. Everyone does this whole Greek theme. I mean, it's been done a million times before. Um, But this is really neat because... It's a two-player game, as you said, and you can set it up and play it within moments, like oh, literally yeah. moments. Yeah, you do, there's very little setup time in this. Yeah. There's also very little learning to do. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of information on the cards that, you know, the cards will do some special abilities, but it's really a fast-paced fun game yeah. it looks a little bit more complicated honestly than it is it is um i'll, I'll walk them through the yeah. cards and you walk them through the turn structure Absolutely. so uh there are three different types of cards in the game they all have the same backs uh there are heroes there are soldiers mm-hmm. and then there are pieces of equipment uh all of the cards i'm going to show you a uh, hero first all of them have an attack value from zero up to four or five uh they all have a health on the bottom uh, some of them have special abilities on there. Either yeah, almost like all the heroes or, do, yeah. You know, you, you, they do something from round to round or they're in the game or, or, or whatever they may be. Uh, and then there are cards over here on the uh, left-hand yeah. side that are kind of their casting abilities. So, for instance, this guy here requires a blue and a green card, and that's simply getting rid of something from your hand to bring right. them onto the board. Multi-use cards, one of my favorite yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, how does the game play? Because it's super, super simple. Yeah, so you have your hand of cards, and on your turn, you're playing as many as you possibly can if you want to. Mm-hmm. You basically just, you can play whatever you can based on what's in your hand. And like Jeremy said, you're using some of the cards to actually play other ones, to fuel them, if you will. Yeah. You're also able to pick up some pieces to supplement that throughout the game. Uh, but you play them in these all all of these spots. There's six spots. And they're, yeah, they're kind of hard to see, but they're right here on the edge of the board. Uh, yeah. And they each represent a different zone in the game, yep. starting with Olympus You've to got Delphi Olympus here. to Troy. Yeah, Olympus has three spots. Mm-hmm. Delphi has two, and yeah. Troy just has one. And what's right. cool about this is, depending on where you play, the cards are going to achieve different things. Right. You play them out, and then after you've played your card for the cards for the turn, you attack. And you attack in order from Olympus all the way to Troy. Right. And basically, if there's not a car, if your opponent doesn't have a card on the other side, it's an automatic success. It's an automatic in, in terms, success, right. and it, it's not like magic in that I'm doing damage against Jeremy. Yeah. But it does something different. So at Olympus here, if you've got a successful attack, you're basically moving this score meter, the score tracker around this sort of tug of war, if you will. Which is one of the end game conditions. It is one of the. If you can get it to seven points down here. Game over. Game over. Which, right. And this is one of the first things I heard about the game that made me really love it because mm-hmm. it reminded me a little of Seven Wonders Duel with those handful of different ways to get the game to end. Right, so right. I love that concept. Now, if there is someone there, what happens? So if there is someone there, you're basically doing something as simple as taking the damage that's done by this character. In some cases, it's zero, so he's not going to do damage. Right. But you add a damage token, or to whatever degree they did do damage, to the opposing character. If the guy does more damage than the defender has, mm-hmm. they're out. Right. So don't get used to your cards. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about this game. There's great characters. The yeah. art's fantastic, and you're looking at this character with these awesome powers, and you're like, oh, sweet. You play him. He's not going to last. Right. They, they, they will pretty much be gone for sure at some point. usually using characters just for uh, just throwing them off to defend an area so at, they're oh, not yeah. getting the benefit of that area. There's plenty of fodder in this game. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be placing guys down saying... You know, it was nice knowing you. Yeah, and it should be noted, too, that some of these guys don't even require a card 
to right. cast. Like, this guy has no cards here, so he's just free to play. And usually these kind of guys are your one-type guys that are going to stay out there for a turn, either block for you for a turn, or again, in maybe one or two attacks before someone can throw a, right. a defender out there. Yeah, so back to the board sure. here. The second area is Delphi, and there's two spots on either side of the board for this. Yeah. And then Delphi, a successful attack, is going to let you basically just take one of these four colors, right. like I said, that can supplement when you're playing cards in the future. So if you need, I mean, some of these heroes require up to like five or six different colors. colors right. So you're going to need to collect a bunch of cards or get some of these from Delphi in order to play them. And, and again, they act just as a, a normal card. They would act, act just like a card. You just have to put it back in Delphi, and then it's up for grabs and again. If, and if there's none available, you take one from an opponent. Right. Which is kind of cool. Right. So you're never stuck without anything to do in those locations. Yeah, because uh, there's been plenty of games I played where one or the other of us had people in Delphi, mm -hmm. and you're just taking colors all game long. Right. right. Uh, usually you spend them. I, I you don't see too many cases where there's none left. Right. Uh, because they're getting spent quite a bit. And then the last spot is Troy here, and in Troy, this is a successful tax. Basically, just going to let you draw a card. Yeah. Uh, which is nice. You do draw cards at the end of the round. So after right. all of those attacks, you're going to be drawing two cards from the deck anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you've got this last successful attack in Troy, you're going to get another. And cards seem to be, your ability to draw cards in this game seem to be everything. Right, the and there's not a lot of other options. Outside of Troy and the standard drawing two, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of options to draw mm -hmm. cards. Right. I have seen some characters mm -hmm. that basically change it so instead of drawing two, you're drawing three at the yeah. end of the round, things yeah. like that. So the cards are basically, as Jeremy was getting to, allow you to break a lot of these different rules and yeah. sort of bend bend the rules, if you will. So the end game conditions are, as we previously said, if, if you can get your marker to seven, game over. Right. The other end game condition is if at any time you start your turn with someone in each of these uh, six slots on the game, game over. And I'll interject. <laughs> that is the one that will sneak up on you. Yeah. Because that is that's it's it's hard to remember that, and I've I've lost a game for sure, yeah. at least one like that. Because you're really just not thinking about that. You're so focused on getting these seven points, right. or just surviving, yeah. um, that you just don't see that, and you need to get people out there and kill off uh, your opponent's <laughs> character, at least one of them, so that you can survive. Surviving is a good term because that's the that's the the main issue that both of us have in our cons is right. that this is a game of survival. It is a game of survival, but also we both notice a little bit of a runaway leader issue it can with happen. the game, which can happen. Um, I've been able to dig myself out of a very bad place before when someone was at the six and one turn away. That's the only time. I've played this uh, once or twice with you yep, and several times. times at a game day um, at a friend of ours. And uh, my experience is that um, there becomes a point in the game when it's hard to come back. Yeah, I played with my son and now I was in the driver's seat in this scenario, mm -hmm. but he was just at a point, you know, pretty quickly, midway through the game at least, where yeah. he was just scrambling. Yeah. The, the entire rest of the game, he was. it was like he was running around trying to plug holes in a dam. He couldn't do anything offensively. All he could do was try to repair the damage over here, yeah. and make it so that I didn't win, basically keep me from winning. Yeah. So it just prolonged the inevitable What is what it felt like. Right. So I would like to play it more to see if you could come back from that more often. It yeah. really comes down to the cards you're getting in your hand. And we're not 100% sure if that can be mitigated through good play or if it's just a happenstance of luck in the game, drawing the right cards with the right combination of uh, of icons in that allow you to cast some of your, your stronger heroes that are in the game. But, and I will say, I haven't seen it where it's helped someone come back, but there are some combos that are very satisfying and brutal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had one card that allowed an adjacent card to attack twice, and if you're able to play that card and then have a just a brute of a character next to him, mm -hmm. you're, even if Jeremy put someone in front of me, okay, I'll kill him, and then a successful attack goes through. Yeah. So it's a pretty brutal combination. A lot of fun. Yeah. It's great to set those up, but then, it, like we said, it makes Jeremy's priority i got to take that guy out. And fun is key in this game because it is fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, super fast-paced. Super fast-paced, really enjoyable, great artwork. The artwork and the graphic design. Uh, I love games like this where you can, like, like I said at the very beginning, when you can set it up and play within 
literally a minute. I mean, yeah. it, it's very, very easy to play. And it is beautiful. It's so clean. Yeah. The, the cards are, the artwork itself is very, very good. But like you said, the graphic design on the cards is very clean. I'm generally not one for that sort of uh, abstract where the the whole card doesn't have a border. Mm-hmm. But these cards are like that, and I like them a lot. I also like the uh, the idea that each of these zones does something different. So there is some strategy and not just regurgitating the card out of your hand to do whatever right. it says. You, you, you can make a conscious decision on, do I want to draw cards heavy in the beginning of the game? Do I want to go for these markers, which may allow me to get a key hero in my hand out early that may be hard for you to deal with for the entire game? Or do I just flood the scoring area of Olympus right. and try to end the game early. So there, there's some good decisions in there that you have to make. And you have to adjust to the other play, those decisions. Yes. Because in that first round, if I go first and I play three guys in Olympus, mm-hmm. Jeremy's going to have to play at least someone there. Yeah. Um, but it, you, you kind of have to go elsewhere. Like I've, I've noticed when someone goes first, I'm like, okay, well, he's going to do that. I'm at least going to get here so I can take a free card right? or get some of these uh, markers. You know, so it's all the decisions which makes, you which, make are like, yeah, how yeah. offensive do I want to be? Yeah. But how defensive do I need to be? And those early decisions can haunt you, too. Because yeah. if someone locks down a position early and you're going somewhere else, it's going to be hard to deal with some of those characters, especially right. the ones that have adjacency factors, like you were saying, that can beef up a character, allow them to attack twice. And, and yeah, the good things. news is none of the characters, I think, you, like you said, the defense on most of them, they only go up to five, but mm-hmm. that, that, that was in rare occasions. So you're able to take out some of these characters pretty easily with one or two attacks generally, and there's not yeah. many ways. If I mean, there's some cards that do this, but there aren't really any standard ways of taking uh, damage off your characters. Yeah. So, so I think we're both in consensus. I do on believe the, we on are our pros and cons. I, I so. do we like it. We kind of, we pretty much covered the pros and cons there. I, I'd say it can the survival is fun, but it can sometimes feel like that's all you're doing yeah. is surviving, uh, and it and it relies a little bit on luck. So we'll reverse it. I'll go first with my score. Go for it. Um, I like this game a lot. Uh, I I do feel like there are some issues with uh, trying to negate the flood of, of bad stuff happening to, happening to you, and I'm not sure there's a way out of it. Having said that, though. The ease of setting this game up and playing it allows you to play it multiple times in a row. Uh, it's, yeah. not, it's not like a game like Raptor where you have to reset everything up uh, and readjust all those starting parameters. It's cool. I like it a lot. And because I like it a lot and because I find it so easy to play and I like the theme and I like the graphic design, 8.5. Nice. Easily an 8.5 for me. Yeah, the, uh, the like you were saying, the fact that you can set it up so quickly, mm-hmm. uh, that and, and not just setting up so quickly, but any two-player game that you can say, okay, you want to reset and play again, is a great element for a two-player game. Right. Because there are, like you said, Raptor is a great game, but there is a fair. I mean, for a two-player game, there's a fair amount of like, okay, we have to organize all this and mm-hmm. change the map maybe yeah. and things like that. The variable yeah. setup's cool, but. Also kind of a drag for setup. Yeah. This one, you just shuffle up and play again. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Uh, the board's nice. I, I love this. Uh, tug of war? T- the, t- the literal tug of war with the score. Yeah. But I'm a huge fan of games where you've got this little skinny board in between you, and it yeah. really kind of helps you get thematically into this one-on-one battle. Yeah. Uh, I, I really like it, too, obviously. Um considering the pros and and some of the cons we talked about i like i said i I do want to get a few more plays under my belt but i definitely give uh fight for olympus a solid eight nice yeah well hopefully that makes your decision a little bit easier about fight for olympus make sure you subscribe to us on youtube follow us on facebook and twitter Absolutely. Follow us on all social media you can. <laughs> and we let, appreciate it. Yeah, and let us know your suggestions for any upcoming videos. And thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Season 1 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored by TMG Games, publisher of great games like Yokohama, Guilds of London, and the soon-to-be-released Coliseum.